you. Welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Pinewood Hills. It's another snagging episode. It, well, I mean, it's snagging. I'm going to treat you to some little things later. If you could, if you sit and watch me pebble everywhere again for 20 minutes, uh, I'll show you something nice at the end. How's that for a deal? Uh, first of all, thanks so much for the feedback in the last episode uh, regarding how to fix this. You're completely right. The queue doesn't have to be where it was. We don't need all that fake stuff outside of the sky ride there. Uh, we can make the QB inside the building. Still couldn't quite get it all hidden, but we one of them is tucked away and the other one we put some crates there and I'm happy enough with how it turned out. And then we use these barriers to make a sort of fake queue on the uh, on the outside. And it, and it works. They, they do what they need to do. And we can ignore this area now forever and not let it haunt our dreams. Um, these, oh my God, I love those things so much. Those fence things. Starting to... I think we're pretty much done with this area. The only thing we haven't got here is a name for the boomerang. And that is going to be uh, on a Patreon post as this uh, video goes up. There's going to be a Patreon post that's going to have a vote for or, or like a way to suggest names for this boomerang. And then also uh, a couple of the rides in the adventure area as well. So if you would like to have your say and you would like to support the channel, you can head over to Patreon. Um, it's a really great way to support me because it means I don't have to do like dodgy ad reads for like key websites and stuff like that and, and raid shadow legends. Um, is that a thing anymore? Am I sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's already another thing now that's not raid shadow legends. Anyway, look, stones and, and, and bushes. Ooh, there is a, uh, a curve piece here and it's not the same curve as the curve into a, um, a queue and we're not going to let it upset us, you know? Like, we have to pick our battles. I could put a rock down and let's say it's done. It's good enough. I, at this point, as I said before, I'm not rushing this. I'm not doing it for the sake of it. But it is going to be a lot of this kind of stuff. It's a lot of finishing off bits. And, uh, and like I say, I try and move around a bit. Try and show you a few bits of this, bits of that. And, uh, and here we're going to put this path in. This was here, and then for some reason it's not... And then, um, and then it all goes away again. I end up colouring that road in like five times. <laughs> you don't see them all. Uh, but here, we had to make all of this flat because, yes, people keep pointing out the, the parking lot was way too small. So, okay, we'll do a big parking lot. Let's get rid of these trees. Why can't I get rid of these? Uh... Oh, God, this is a whole thing where I can do a scenario and stuff. I can resave it, though, I think. I think, I think I just need to come in here and get rid of, like, all of this stuff. And then save it and get back out of here before anyone notices. I've already pushed the uh, boundary back. I'm pretty sure that wasn't where the original boundary was. I'm pretty sure it was here, where this weird terrain is. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's take a moment to kind of fix this then. Uh, we're going to get rid of any floating tree. Uh, I don't... Mine these ones here? I think we're just gonna smooth this out. Maybe we go we can always just replant them, can't we? Yeah, let's take let's take the ones out that might be an issue. All of these. Uh yeah, I th yeah, this is fine like this. We'll probably just leave that. Smooth that out. Smooth all that out. Uh this needs smoothing a bit then. Okay, so let's jump into terrain. Um smooth. Oh my god, this is gonna take forever. Once all that's smoothed out, then we can come back in and uh, paint all this tarmac in. Oh, a real-time section in between the voiceover for a time-lapse. You, you don't even know which way's up right now, do you? Oh, man. Editing Jaunty is messing with you. Uh, the, the the ride there, the... Uh, what's it called? The, the coach truck that... It disappeared. I don't know. I, I guess I deleted it when I deleted those trees. I don't know. I gotta put it back in. I might put it back in. I'll probably put it back in. That, that doesn't happen today, though. Um, I'm gonna take this road, uh, this path down here into this, which is gonna become a backstage area. We'll worry about that in a minute. Now, I need to talk to you about the parking lot, because in a moment, I'm gonna put down a lot of parking lots. Lots. Park, car park. Parking. I, ooh. Okay, so this is a weird one that I struggle with now I've moved to Canada. In the UK, it's a car park. And in Canada, it's a parking lot. And I try my hardest to use the North American terms just in my everyday speech, just so people don't pull me up on it, but also so that my son learns the language of the country he lives in. So, yes, I say parking lot. I understand it's a car park. Um, 
just because I know somebody will pull me up on that. Oh, you're British and you say mom. And yeah, okay. I say mom because I'm a brummie, not because of anything else. Oh, wow. I've hit my own nerve. Uh, some of these spaces are reserved for people. And I honestly can't remember what it was for. I'm assuming it was some sort of bonus that we did for patrons or for donations or something like that at one point. Uh, I've kept them though. I didn't want to get rid of them. So even though most of this car park is going to be, oh, I said car park then, look, I'm, I'm in my own head. Um, just because <laughs> even though this parking lot is mostly going to be these uh, awesome TMTK uh, ones that just kind of sit there and fill the space. Uh, I am going to leave those ones at the top there because some of them have got names in. It does mean that it's a little disjointed, the, the road is a little off kilter, but it is absolutely good enough. And that's really what I'm looking for here. This is the sort of thing that you load in and you go, oh, look at that big car park, cool. And then you, then you don't worry about it and then you carry on looking at the park. So implied realism with the emphasis being on the implied so much it's not even funny here um but i'm actually happy with how it turns out it it looks like a parking lot now i know um there are going to be people who look at this and go well that's obviously not a regulation parking lot there's a great creator i'm not saying he would say this but there's a great creator out there called corvus um and uh, and he's just started a new series i think it's called deadwood lake or something like that um and it's he basically built the parking lot in episode one and i think that's his job and like he makes sure that it's all up to regulation and that the sizes are correct and it's really great to watch and it looks amazing uh, yeah you ain't getting that here this is look there's parking there's 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 lots of parking it's good and now it's roughly the right size i don't know i had a look at a few in the uk um flamingo lands park car park is like 30 spots it's ridiculous i think because it has a big um uh, holiday park on the back side of it <laughs> back side uh, i think they use that space more but i don't know maybe maybe it's meant to be big but then the old terrace one is huge so maybe it makes sense i don't know it looks better now it looks a bit more in scale and then we're working on this backstage area and um again it, I, whilst i do enjoy doing this kind of stuff um, I'm, I'm doing it more so that it, it's to kind of fill the gap now than anything else really. It's not that I feel like the park necessarily needs backstage. Um, but having a look around, it, it does really. There isn't enough of the stuff. And uh, we have a little bit of an area right by the front entrance and then right down the side alongside the original midway, there's some backstage stuff. And then we do have an office block. It's across the other side of the road, but there is like a, an admin offices. So I've hit all the major points. But the one thing I didn't really have was just uh, storage. It was just space to put stuff. Uh, so that's what we're doing here with a couple of larger warehouses. Uh, just because a lot of the places have stuff and you know maybe one of these is chilled and it, ho it holds a, a good chunk of the the food for the uh, for the park and the other one just sort of holds uh, excess stock of all the gift shop stuff and, and what have you I don't know I don't really know how a lot of the logistics of these places work but it would make sense to me that at least um, somewhere in the place there's just a big old room that you can stick stuff in and look after it so that's kind of what we're building here and uh, and I think they turn out okay. They look they look like what they're meant to look like. And also it finishes off that area, and we have a nice little. Um, we get to use some of these TMTK things that past me made. I, it's so weird how hyperfixation works. I don't know if any of you watching sort of deal with it as well. But I made those. I made those signs, and I made that uh, bucket and a uh, mop. If you held a gun to my head now and said make them again, you'd have to shoot me because it's absolutely, completely, 100% gone out of my head. I think I did them in Blender and then I painted the things in paint or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how how I was able at one point to teach myself that over a weekend and then completely let it fall out of my brain when I didn't need it anymore. I don't know. That's just I thought that was something interesting to talk about. Uh, I'm glad they're still there though. I think they look really good. Good job, past John T. Uh, a little bit of parking here. We have these uh, trucks, that, and they're actually a picture on them. You can upload a picture to them. We need to go back. I'm thinking of doing like a big live stream about it, and where we just sit all day and do the all of the posters that we lost, and probably other ones that we haven't thought about yet. I think that's something I would like to do. I think that'd be a good fun day. Just get open Photoshop and uh, just do some chatting with you all while we do them. Uh, and also be maybe a nice way to celebrate 100,000 subscribers that we've hit again. 
uh, which is awesome. Thank you so much for the support. It's incredible. I put a post up about it and what have you. Um, the, I, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it, you might not know if you're new or if you haven't been around or didn't really notice what happened when I stepped away from uh, YouTube for a bit. I, I hit it. It's the second time we've hit it, basically. We got up to about 104,000, I think. And in the time that I moved away from YouTube for a little while, whilst I got my life sorted again after the divorce and what have you, um, we dropped back down to about 97,000, I think. And then that's where we were at when I came back to the channel uh, a couple of months ago. So um, first of all, if you're back, if you, if you sort of didn't, you unsubscribed and resubscribed, welcome back. It's so great to have you here. I completely understand why people unsubscribed. Like I'm not an active channel. I clean up my channels all the time on subscriptions. So I completely get it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was nice to see people come back and new people find us as well. And obviously Planet Coaster 2 announcement was the thing that just pushed us over. And, uh, and yeah, it's awesome. So I already have the plaque. It's already on the wall. I'll, uh, I'll show it off on the next live stream, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it's already there and it's looking great and I'm very proud of it and I feel like I've sort of re-earned it <laughs> by, uh, by hitting that again. Uh, we've changed the pace then. That was some backstage stuff and I think it's turned out pretty well. Now we're going to have a look at some of the adventure area. And uh, the idea behind the adventure area was it's, it's going to be the most recent addition to the park, probably sort of early 2000s, I guess. That's kind of where the park sits uh, in its timeline. It's sort of mid, you know early to mid 2000s. And this was probably the most recent upgrade. So not only is it the most recent, it's also probably the highest budget thing they've ever done as well. Saying that, it's still very budget conscious. All of the theming is pretty much just still wooden planks, uh, some barrels, and some foliage. And then the theming very quickly moves to one side when other stuff needs to happen. So here, for instance, you know, we did that sort of sandstone and wooden fence. But then also, there's just this kind of don't die fencing when you actually get to the ride as well. And then here, we just throw down some plants. And so I'm, I'm staying very budget conscious, making sure that everything we do is within the uh, area, you know, within the sort of confines of, of what you would expect to see in a mid-tier British park. And I won't lie, the more this park has been built, the closer it's got to something like Alton Towers or Thorpe Park, as opposed to the probably the original inspiration for something like this which would have been something like flamingo land or light water valley so yes the budget we, i talked about this in the old episodes i know i did um, the budget kind of got away from me a little bit but it's this is still very much uh, a budget focused park as opposed to the sort of wild budgets of somewhere like disney or universal you know you just all of this don't die fencing everywhere the fact that the theming usually more often than not is some rocks and a little bit of bushwork you know, I'm still making sure that I'm sticking with that sort of budget awareness. But this is, uh, you know, the higher end of it, the most recent sort of thing they did. Here, I'm just having to knock that down a little bit. That flat ride gets a shy close to it, and I feel like that's probably how they would have solved that. Uh, the reason there's a flat ride here, I don't know. There was just a bit of an open green space, and, and like I said, this is a budget-conscious park. They wouldn't really have open green spaces, really. If they could help it, they would get some revenue out of it. So uh, so we squeeze in a flat, and then we also we lost a few flats from the pier uh, redo that happened last week. So it, I just kind of felt like I was owing the park at least a little bit of uh, um, some some sort of throughput. And we stick this thing down and it's gross and it's just clearly a fair ride that they've managed to squeeze in and put, throw some plants around. And that's, uh, you know, keeping it a little bit budget. All right, um, now we're going to have a look at this because that's enough time lapse for one day. Uh, first of all, we have a new Skyride sign. Just kept it real simple here using a custom font from Fog. Uh, these are amazing. Love them. Use them sparingly because they're like a billion pieces. But uh, yeah, I think here it works really well. Also did a bit more of the queue work for Boomerang. Pretty much finished now, to be honest with you. And we also added these to the back of it. A couple of drinks uh, dispensers, a couple of vending machines there, and a little shed just sort of stuck onto the back. Uh, I see these a lot at different parks. I know Alton Towers has definitely got a few of these. I, think I remember the what being a chocolate bar one in the air queue at least. And they're always very often sort of stuck on with a little bit of uh, shed work like this. Um, obviously they don't work, but these are great. These are off the uh, Theme Makers Toolkit and they look awesome. 
Um, yeah, happy with those. And the last thing I want to work on then is all the way over there. It's the station area for the rapids ride. I wanted to keep a really low profile, so I actually uh, maybe done this backwards. I put the roof first, and then I want to build down from it. Okay, there's a look at it from uh, from the path view there, and um, through the magic of editing. I, if that works, I'll, it'll be a miracle. Um, but here we go. We have a, a station in there. Like I said, tried to keep it as low as I could and theming light, but still kind of like a little adventure-y. So we put a bit of a green color on it, a little bit of rope, just the Azuri shield up there is like the one uh, piece of scenery they purchased. <laughs> and then here it is from a, a better angle so we can have a better look at it. So I started to flesh out the uh, the platform area so that it's a little bit more open. Uh, this whole thing here, the, the lift hill will most likely be enclosed and then this uh, back area will come onto a um, uh, a hut where these things can get stored or what have you. And then after that it's pretty much just going to be uh, rockery and, and shrubs and trees and stuff and then we need to obviously finish off the queue as well with a nice little bridge coming across so uh, yeah happy with uh, how this has turned out we've got a mind your head sign on this side then on this side we have a stay seated um, and think like from here it looks pretty good the only thing I'm going to have a little trouble with I think it's a little bit of uh, edging here as well but still needs tidying up uh, the only thing I'm going to have a little trouble with I think is the fact that from here we have this sort of sheer face now like it isn't huge it's the it's pretty much just that drops it's about sort of 15 feet but probably need a little bit of rock work in there I think um I, I don't know oh, answers on a postcard please so what we could do here we could do a couple of light like wooden structures as buildings but I really want to keep the theming super low on this because it's already like a real big expansion for a park of this size so I don't want to start doing like water wheels and uh, like an old timey frontier town or something that you'd normally expect on something like this like I really want to keep this like low end uh, and like I said this already the majority of the money has already gone on this basically just wood structure uh, happy with what I did in here there's a really big footprint on the uh, station so we just got a little bit of like last minute cattle penning in case it's needed in there and I think that breaks that space up quite nicely the only other thing I want to talk to you about today is uh, some rocks. Let's go into scenery and take a look. So I did have the uh, the red rocks in here, the desert rocks, mostly because I want them to look uh, fake. Uh, but I got a couple of comments saying that they were just too red. So there was just a bit too much going on with them. So uh, we would normally use the uh, the alpine or the uh, deciduous rock here as like actual natural rock. Um, there is these stalagmites, and then obviously we have the tropical ones as well. Perhaps maybe the grassland ones would look. Um, I, I want them to look a little out of place, basically. I want them to look a little fake. Um, not necessarily like they actually are fake, but like they've maybe they're poured concrete to look like a, a rock or, um, you know, something like that. So the problem with the grasslands is there's no little ones. They only have the big ones, unfortunately, and the, and the, the little ones are actually really quite useful. Um, but there's that gives you a quick idea of what they look like and then we did have these ones Jesus we do have <laughs> we did have these ones in but I think the comments were there a bit too red and like th whatever I use here for this fountain they'll be used a little perhaps in the station entry but it's not like I'm gonna put these red rocks all over the place no like all over here we're gonna go uh, most the most definitely for the uh, the realistic uh, sort of local uh, local rocks of, of deciduous and, uh, and alpine like we've used everywhere else so it's only really here for the fountain uh, but let me know yeah maybe maybe grassland with some temple pieces may be the way to go but I would love your feedback on that all over the place today but I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching please give us a like and all that YouTube subscribery goodness till the next one be good <laughs>